Greetings, everyone. P. Pardo here from Comic Book Easers. Welcome to another episode of the show. I know it's been a while. We haven't put up any content in like a month. It's been a crazy summer. Bill and I haven't been getting together at all, and we've both been so busy, especially myself. But uh, here's our first video in a bit. And what a better time to relaunch back on Comic Book Easers than with the king himself, Mr. Chris Allo, of course, from over on Sea of Tranquility. And uh, we're here to do a Deadpool and Wolverine film review because... That's been all the talk of late, right, Chris? I mean, absolutely. Fans are like everybody's all excited. We've got uh, perhaps the first really, really enjoyable, great, fun uh, Marvel Universe film in what seems like a couple of years. I mean, we've had some decent ones, but this is, I think, the first one where people are really excited, and the box office is showing it. Hundred percent. Yeah, I believe uh, as of yesterday, they said the five-day total worldwide was uh 500 million dollars so That's half right. of literally a hundred million dollars a day which yeah. is insane it's not and yeah marvel really needed a hit and listen a lot of their movies that they've made since endgame sucked just like most of their tv shows since endgame sucked so they needed a win uh but from what i've heard this is mostly due to uh director sean levy and ryan reynolds and, and hugh jackman and that disney had very little to do with this. In fact, there are stories that the Marvel head honcho Kevin Feige uh, is the one that's been suppressing this for years. I don't know if that's true, but that's the the story that's out there because he didn't want to do an R-rated Marvel movie. And after the success of this, after only a couple days, you got to wonder if he's rethinking that because 100%. I've already seen reports and I don't know how accurate they are that they've announced that the blade movie, which has been in in the works for years yes. is now going to be rated R as well. Could be because I did see an interview with Kevin Feige and he didn't name the character, but somebody said to him, well, now would you do more R rated Marvel movies? And he said, uh, yes, given the, you know, for particular characters and circumstances, and he goes, I can think of one particular character in mind. I immediately thought of the Punisher, but right, a buddy of mine thought of Blade. So I'm like, well, either one of those, per you know, to me purposely are should be R-rated films. Well, the Punisher for sure, if they're going to take it off of the, the streaming service streaming, and make yeah. it an actual film, because uh, that's a no-brainer. Because quite frankly, the Netflix Punisher show was total R-rated material. Hundred percent, yeah, without a doubt. Uh, I would think Blade would make sense too, because quite frankly, you, you almost need to make Blade kind of a horror film. It's not absolutely, yeah. I mean, it, that's not super. Vampires, yeah, no yeah. doubt. Yeah, for sure. All right, so uh, so back to uh, Deadpool and Wolverine. So I guess let's start with why has this movie resonated so much with people? I mean, I think it's fairly obvious. You've got two characters that have a huge built-in fan base. I mean, those first two Deadpool movies did very well. But they were very different, right? Very violent, lots of kind of yep. slapsticky, snarky humor. That's the character. And let's face it, Hugh Jackman returning as Wolverine, which is a beloved character, not only in the comics, but on the screen, makes perfect sense. And I think the antagonistic relationship of them throughout the film is what really makes it work. And then if, you know, again, sport, we're going to give lots of spoilers today, folks. So yeah. if you haven't seen this film and you don't want to know all the little you details, not be watching this. Stop watching now, right? Because uh, there's no, no other way to talk about this movie than to give it all away. Um, and the fact that it becomes at the end kind of a buddy film, but it's almost like throughout the whole movie, you're, it, it's you can't see that happening. Hundred percent, Pete. I was going to say this is this is like Lethal Weapon or Forty Eight Hours or. You know, I've also heard people, you know, say, you know, planes, trains and automobiles, you know, two guys that do not get along. And then by the by the end of the film, yes, they they do seem to to finally, you know, be friends with with one another. And uh, yeah, I, I loved this movie. Um, I was there. I was afraid of spoilers getting out. So I took off from work for last Thursday and uh was at the first showing which was 3 p.m thursday and i was shocked at how much i enjoyed it um and then i saw it again uh on uh tuesday night and i'm going again this weekend i mean i really <laughs> enjoyed it i was shocked at how much uh, you know i i enjoyed this movie 
Yeah, I'm, I won't be able to see it again this weekend, but I'm going to go uh, one day next week. I'm going to go check it out again. It's it's a blast. Yeah. Um, because it hits on a lot of levels. It gives you, and you said it to me, I think, right after you saw it, you said that this film appeals to true comic book fans because there's, A, there's lots of references to stuff that happens in the comics, but more than that, there's references to all sorts of comic book films that have happened since way back when. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. Who is just maybe not as much wrapped up in what the MCU has been doing with the multiverse and all that. There's still plenty of references to stuff from the X-Men films, the Blade films, the first Daredevil film. And plus, there's this thing about the Deadpool movies where, you know, Ryan Reynolds and, and the Deadpool character are constantly making references to things in real life. And I think that's what's so much fun about this. I mean, he's constantly referencing stuff behind the scenes at Disney and at Marvel. And oh, stuff. I mean, it's it's it never ending throughout the whole movie. Yeah. I mean, I, I've seen one or two of the videos where they're like all the Easter eggs from Deadpool and Wolverine. And it's like, guys, you, you didn't even scratch the surface. I mean, there there's one point where... Uh, you know, and I was ex explaining to uh, a couple friends of mine and even the misses, like there are so many jokes and a lot of them land. But if you don't know the circumstances, um, it's not it wouldn't be funny. Right. Like, for example, there's one point where where uh, Deadpool turns to somebody and he's, he mentioned he points to Wolverine. And he's like, oh, well, he recently got divorced. Well, Wolverine didn't get divorced, but right. Hugh Jackman had a very messy divorce. Yes. But if you didn't know that in real life, you know, you you wouldn't get the joke. Early in the movie where where Deadpool and Wolverine are talking, uh, Deadpool uh, turns to Wolverine and he goes, oh, well, welcome to the MCU. He goes, well, you're kind of joining at a low point. <laughs> well, if you, you know, if if you don't know that the last five years worth of movies and Marvel TV shows have sucked, you wouldn't get that as a joke. But the fact that Marvel is allowing that line to be in the film yes. makes you think that they understand that it hasn't been so rosy of late. Oh, 100%. I mean, They're even making in, fun of themselves. Which... In, in, the, in the trailer, I think it's in one of the trailers when uh, the TVA cops pull out their batons and, and you know, uh, Wade, the Deadpool, turns to them and says something like, uh, listen, pet. Pegging may be uh, new to Disney, but it's not new to me, friend. <laughs> I mean, it, it is crazy to think that there is so much that they um, that is technically in a Disney movie. The only thing they didn't do, there was no nudity in Deadpool 2 and no nudity in this one. I would have liked some nudity somewhere because I'm always liking that stuff. But <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, the language is is filthy. Um, well, F bombs. And, I mean, Hugh Jackman oh, was just Wolverine, is constant, just, which is great. Yeah, the um, you know, the violence is, is unbelievable, uh, and and it is. I also think I thought it was the funniest of the the three films. I would agree. I left, and and you know, I went. My wife went with me, and she's hit or miss with some of these movies. Sometimes yeah. she laughed throughout the whole thing. I yeah. mean, it, it's funny, and the and it's but it's not forced funny. Like I to give you a comparison. Like I thought the most recent Thor film was Which trying I didn't even hard to be funny and cutesy, and it wasn't funny at all. This was like really great slapstick humor, and all the jokes were really well thought out and connected to something, not, not just trying to be cute. Right. I, I, I agree. Yeah, I agree. And then also, you know, while the storyline is, is a bit thin, I also thought similar to Deadpool and Deadpool 2, this movie has a lot of heart. Yeah. You know, uh, Deadpool has, has his arc and certainly Wolverine has, has his arc. And, you know, there was a, a couple moments, Pete, where I, I got choked up yeah. by some of the stuff I was seeing on, on scene. L least of all, uh, finally, which again, they make a joke about after 25 years, finally getting Hugh Jackman in an actual, mostly comic accurate um wolverine costume when he put i marked out when he put the oh my God, when he put i mean he looked great in the suit the whole time but when he puts the the cowl on it was like holy shit yeah it's unbelievable you know, which you i know he, he wore it for that whole last quarter of the film yeah 
You didn't yeah. take it off because that's the one thing that annoys me about the Marvel movies sometimes. Yes. These guys constantly taking the masks off. Totally. Or, you know, you know, know what they look like under the mask. Just leave it on when they're in Like action. in Thor 1 where uh, Chris Hemsworth puts the helmet on for about 30 seconds and yeah. then that's it. Never see it again. And, you know, Captain America, Steve yes. Rogers, constantly taking that mask off. 100%. Iron Man, you know, Tony. I mean, yep. bad enough that we know that Iron Man is Tony Stark because in the comic, nobody yes. knew that, right? But of course, they announced that right away. But yeah, just leave it on. Spider Man, constantly ripping it off. Yeah. Like, it's on. You have it for a reason, right? Totally. I mean, listen, this this is this is the character. I mean, you know, I guess the wolf, the difference with, with Wolverine uh, versus, say, Batman is that, uh, you know, uh, Wolverine has done plenty of adventures without his proper comic accurate costume. Um, right. But, you know, to me, uh, this was this was definitely something special. And, the, and they knew it. They knew what the the whole movie to me is. They knew what the fans wanted and they gave it to them. Unlike yeah, recent Marvel movies and Marvel TV shows. And then the other property, which we're not going to go into, owned by Disney. The Star Wars movies and the Star Wars TV shows, they knew what the fans wanted and they gave it to them. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of interesting things that happen in this film that because, you know, they talked leading up to it that a lot of what happens in this film is going to affect what's going to happen going forward in the MCU. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Right. I mean, there's a lot of stuff about the multiverse in here and like what earth this was and is this in the same universe as where the avengers are but they talk about the avengers throughout the whole film right yes. so there's, it's, there's a little bit of kind of like all right well where is this actually taking place and when is it actually taking place and early on so we know obviously that this comes after the last season of loki right because you have the whole that whole division there right and they don't mention loki at all no. but i found it really interesting like early on they show that little clip that uh, deadpool sees of him and thor right thor holding a dying deadpool and crying and he's like whoa, whoa, whoa what's that and they're like oh you weren't supposed to see that that's something i wonder new. if that's if they they put that in there uh, because after this i am sure deadpool and wolverine are going to be in the next two Avengers movies. I'm wondering if that was a setup that they're going to write that in into one of the next two movies. Or the other thing I was thinking, or is that showing a similar situation that was very similar to what we saw? Because obviously in the, the film that, that that's taken from is Loki's the one who Thor is yes. holding. Absolutely. And, or is that saying that in the multiverse, events, similar events are taking place, but maybe with different people? So oh, totally. I mean, a totally different Earth, a totally similar scenario Thor, yep. where it 100%. wasn't Loki in that situation, but it was Deadpool and Deadpool dies and Thor is holding him. So that there where they say is so is that foreshadowing something that will take place or is it showing something that did take place, but in another another dimension, another part of the multiverse that mimicked what we've already known and what we've already seen with Thor and Loki. I don't 100%. know. 100%. Yeah, it could be. And that's the... But they brought it up the, a few times during the film. They did. And that's the beauty of the multiverse is that anything is possible. Yeah. But some great you know, there, things in this there, film. there could be multiverse versions of me, of me and you. And maybe in the multiverse, uh, you're fat and I'm skinny. I mean, who knows? Anything or, is possible. Or you're George Lemay and I'm Martin Popoff, right? <laughs> exactly. Anything is possible. It's the multiverse. <laughs> uh, God, there's like so much to talk about with this film. Yeah, there's a, there's uh, one a lot. of my favorite scenes is when the two of them go at it again in the car. That, that was very funny. Car. Just hilarious. Yeah. And of course, you know, to me, the joke, the joke is, which they didn't really need to explain at that point, but these guys could kick the shit out of each other for a week. But they both have the same healing factor, so yes. they're both just immediately going to heal up. Right. So it's it's very funny that yeah they can keep stabbing and shooting each other, and yeah nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. Uh, so let's talk about all the surprises. Um, so again, spoiler alert: they bring back uh, Wesley Snipes as Blade, Jennifer Garner as Electra. We get Tanning uh, Tanning Ch uh, Channing Tatum. Yeah. Tanning Tatum. I always say his name. As Gambit. As, as Gambit, which this is a little insight thing, right? So this is a character that, he loves yes. personally, and he 
tried so hard to get a Gambit film made that never actually happened. Correct. That's why there's there's a joke, you know, where like they talk about how long they've been because all these characters are in the void, which is kind of like the Mad Max wasteland where they're plucked from their own earths and thrown into this purgatory area. And, you know, Electra and Blade talk about how long they've been there. And then Gambit says something like, I don't know. I feel like I've always been here. <laughs> well, that's the joke because they never made a Gambit movie. They, like they Pete said, they it. really tried. But yeah. um, we also they also bring back Laura, a.k.a. X-23, yeah. uh, from the Logan film. And Chris Evans, not as Captain America, but as uh, Storm. Johnny Storm, the Human Torch. Yes, which I, that was hilarious. That was great. And, and there are a bunch of other small, small characters that they brought back. From the X Men films, from yeah, you get a bunch X-Men of evil mutants, class, yeah, yeah, yeah like La- Lady Deathstrike, uh, yeah. Juggernaut, Toad. Um, yep, Toad. I mean, there, there's, there's quite a few of them. Yeah, and of course, the big bad in this film is what's supposed to be uh, Charles Xavier's sister, right? right. He, he knew he never, he never knew he had, right? So she's been here in the void for quite a while, and I think she does a fine job. Yeah. Um, what else? Uh, what I thought was in, so one of the big things that I got coming out of this is that at towards the end of the film, you know, when everything has been done and you have Deadpool and Wolverine, and I think Deadpool now all of a sudden considers him a friend. It's like, well, you know, now Wolverine is basically in Deadpool's earth, right? In his uh, timeline. And he's like, so what are you, you know, are we going to see each other? Are we Are going to do whatever? And Wolverine's basically like, nah, I don't think so. I'm just going to go do my own thing. But then the next scene, he obviously changes his mind. He goes back to Deadpool's apartment. They're all hanging out, having a great time and whatever. Which I thought was great. Uh, was, I, yeah. I completely that. did not, ex- you know, since we're going to the, towards the ending, completely didn't expect like a nice, happy ending. Uh, I really thought, you know, Wolverine was going to die and the, 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 uh, Deadpool's Earth was going to be snipped, and and that was it. And yeah, I, I even that the ending I thought was was great. Although I did think that was strange, because you know when when Logan's like, all right, I'm gonna do whatever, I'll figure it out because I always do. And I'm like, well, wait, you're you know there is a Professor X, and the X Men are not dead yet. But then I'm like, well, wait, if he goes now, we're getting really nerdy. If we go, if he go, if this Logan goes to the x mansion isn't there going to be a wolverine there isn't there going to be two wolverines on this earth because the wolverine on that earth dies but in the future because that's in the logan movie which i think takes place in like 2030 or something i mean it is very confusing it's a little confusing at that point yeah so i i I was left wondering okay well if they're going to continue, it's almost like you can't not continue having the Wolverine and Deadpool characters in future movies. Oh, no. well, listen, with, with this movie making this kind of money, 100%, they are not letting, you know, people are like, oh, they should leave it here. That's not how Hollywood works. No. If it makes a ton of money, we're making a sequel. I mean, you have to think that we're going to see Wolverine, Hugh Jackman as Wolverine going forward. Yes. Fighting the Hulk, teaming with Thor and and Captain America and, and yeah. whoever you know, Captain Marvel, Spider Man. I mean, can you imagine Spider Man and Wolverine together? Oh, for sure. Tom Holland and Hugh yeah. Jackman. I mean, it's the thought of all this stuff is like. So I was left wondering. It's like, well, obviously they can't drop either of these two characters. Do we have Hugh Jackman back in the role as long as they can do it? Because they made jokes throughout the film. It's like you'll be yeah. doing this till you're ninety. And he still is great in the role. Yeah, he's a bit older, right? But whatever. But that's okay because, you know, Wolverine, Logan was always drawn as he was never a young kid. You know, he was always an older guy because he's been, you know, they say in the movie, which in the 70s, this, this, they never said how old he was then. But right now, now it's in the comics that he is, you know, a couple hundred years old. A couple right? hundred years old. So, yeah. right, it was in one of the previous movies. Mm-hmm. He fought, I had to remind my, remind my buddy Glenn, you know, in the beginning of Wolverine Origins, and he fought in the Civil War. So, I mean, it's a guy that's been around for hundreds of years. A long time. Yeah. yeah. You know, there, there's the one scene, of course, when, when Deadpool is going from 
timeline to timeline to timeline. At one point, he he pops in, and there is Henry Cavill as Wolverine, which was awesome. Which was really cool. And part of me was thinking, well, if Hugh Jackman ever decides to kind of step out of the role, boom, you yeah. got your next Wolverine right there. Yeah, you got a built great. in. He looked great. I mean, in that one like five minute sequence, which was early in the movie, which the the base the basic premise is. Uh, which we didn't we didn't go over in the beginning. Uh, Deadpool's world is dying because Logan dies in the in the future. Logan in the in the Deadpool uh, in the Logan movie rather. So he is uh, what was it? What was the term? Uh, an anchor being. Yes. So the war his world is going to die. So they they give Deadpool the chance to move to the sacred timeline which is the Marvel timeline of the 616 films, the MCU. And he takes a different route by wanting to find a replacement Wolverine. And that's, that's the movie. So the, 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 the plot I, I think was one of the, um, the biggest downfalls of the movie. Although when I'm watching it the second time, it, it mattered less because the, the plot is thin, but man, that sequence early in, in the movie I mean, it's shit right from the comics, right? So we see we see Deadpool uh, run into because he's looking for a Wolverine. So, like Pete says, he runs into the the Henry Cavill version of Wolverine. He goes to the cover of X Men Two Fifty One, where Logan has been crucified on a big X. Yep. And he goes to Hulk Three Forty, where where <laughs> it's uh, Wolverine in the brown suit. At fighting the Hulk, and you could see the Hulk's reflection off of Wolverine's adamantium claws. Yeah. You know, then they have a part where uh, Deadpool is fighting the Age of Apocalypse uh, Wolverine, where his he's more feral looking. He's missing a hand. Uh, I mean, it was like holy shit! This is literally right from the comics. Yeah, and that was all awesome Easter eggs. That if you're you know, uh, not a comic book fan, you probably would it's not well lost appreciate it as much. Yeah, yeah, that's. I mean, that's what I love so much about this. And I, I don't, I don't think you know they were. They've done this sort of thing in like some of the Guardians of the Galaxy movies and in some of the Avengers, the classic Avengers films, where you do get all these Easter eggs and all these little references of things to yes. true comic book lore. I feel they've gotten away from that over the last like two years oh, yeah. or so, two, three years. So that's why this was, I think, so much fun because it gave you, if you're a true comic book fan, it gave you everything you wanted. If you're an yes. action fan, it gave you the, all that. And uh, it's it was just a raunchy, fun, action-packed comic book film for comic book fans, but for adult comic book fans. Absolutely, yes. This was, this is really, is the, you know, even though the, the screenings I went to, I did see children you know, that were there with their parents, which is understandable. Listen, I went to R-rated movies as a kid. So did you. But yeah, this is definitely not a kid's movie. It's not intended for kids. Yeah, this is this is at the uh, adult audience. And, it, and listen, it's working. Yeah, do you, do you think, I mean, what do you predict the uh, the potential final box office of this? Oh, I, I, I say it's going to be uh, over a billion dollars. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, without, without, yeah, a, without a doubt. I'm wondering how far up the ladder it actually Right, goes. how far between 1 to 2, uh, you know, maybe right. 1.3, maybe 1.4, um, which is, listen, that's a lot of money for, it's especially money. For there, this is uncharted territory for an, an R-rated movie. I mean, the only, the, the biggest R-rated movie right now, as far as I know, as far as uh, box office is the Joker movie, which hit a billion dollars. And I'm sure this is going to blow past that. Oh yeah, for sure. I I, I agree. I, I I keep thinking it's like you know the, the three highest grossing Marvel films are is what uh, Infinity War and Endgame. Infinity War, Endgame, and, and those are both over two billion, I think, right? And uh, yeah, uh, yes. Um, and then the third one I think is Spider Man No Way Home, the last Spider Man right. movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I could, yeah, I could see this, you know, being being under those for sure. Yeah. Yeah, wouldn't surprise me at all. So where they go from here? I mean, we don't have any other films till next year, obviously. Um, think... Right, and yeah, there's the next. The next movie is Captain America Four, yeah. and yeah, these guys won't be in it. The big announcement, of course, the other day, and I'm sure all your viewers are aware of Robert Downey Jr. being announced as 
Doctor Doom for the next two Avengers movies. Um, but I am sure somehow they will work um, Deadpool and Wolverine and possibly some of the other Fox characters into those two movies, yeah, along with the new Fantastic Four and all the other previous Marvel characters. Yeah, because right, we got Fantastic Four coming out. Uh, that's next year as well, right? Yes. And, and, you know, that's Super, shooting right now. Super Wars is a big mashup of of everybody. Yes, the comic, that's the so. sixth Avengers movie, and that seems like that's the next. Um, they're not saying it, but it seems like that's the next movie that's going to be like similar to Endgame. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I would be surprised if they they reboot everything after that because. By the time that comes out in whatever it's going to be, four years from now, let's say, um, you know, now we were talking now it's in four years from now, it'd be 2028. I think that's exactly 20 years from the first Iron Man movie. Yeah. Yeah. And even though all of these actors are still completely capable, as time goes on, they just keep making more money. Yeah. You know, the rumor is that uh, Robert Downey Jr. is going to make $100 million dollars Per movie for these next two movies. And you know, uh, if he's getting that kind of money, Chris Evans is saying, hey, I want, maybe you can't give me that much, but I want a, a bump. And Chris Hemsworth is going, I want a bump. And all of them are all. So, yeah, I would not be surprised if that's Secret Wars resets everything. Yeah, I think that's a pretty safe bet right there. So... All right, there you have it, everybody. Uh, two thumbs up, two big thumbs up for both of us uh, for Deadpool and Wolverine. If you haven't gone out to see it, well, now you know what the whole movie is about, but uh, I think you can still have a blast with it. And if you have seen it, let us know what you think down in the comments below. And uh, we'll see you next time here on Comic Book Geezers. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell so you get alerted of all of our content as it posts. And please hit that like button. I'll be back with Wild Bill looking at actual comics fairly soon. So till then, uh, we'll see you here at Comic Book Geezers. Thanks to Chris Allo for coming Thanks on. For and I am Pete Pardo. We'll see you all next time. Take care. Bye-bye.